Hi there, it's Nicole for Handmade Holiday 2015, and today I have some pretty packages. This is similar to the series I did last year, or the project in the series I did last year, with the exception that this is the 2015 version. And I'm going to be using some stamps from Carrie Bradford Studio with some die cuts from Carrie Bradford Studio. And my color um, scheme is completely different than last year. Last year I did more of an elegant with whites and golds. This, year's, this year I'm sticking with the more traditional colors of red, white, with a little bit of green. And then the tags are all going to be this br uh, black with bright white embossing. I am using Carrie's Twinkle and Tagged stamp sets to stamp on these black die cut tags. The tags are also from digital die cut kits from Carrie Bradford Studio. The exact kits are going to be shown across the bottom of the screen here in case you're wondering exactly where I got these particular die cut images. I'm only using two styles here. I'm doing six tags for the six boxes I'm creating. Instead of doing a bunch of different types of packaging like I did last year, I decided to stick with the box from the Santa's Toy Shop kit. I love it. It's a two-piece box, and I'll show that here in a little bit. Um, it's just a really great, useful type of um, package, I guess I want to say, and it was probably my favorite from last year, so I decided to do a whole bunch of them for this year's. I am stamping the phrases and images here on these black tags die cut from some Simon Says Stamp black cardstock with Versamark ink and then sprinkling on white embossing powder. I am using a powder tool on each of the tags before I stamp and emboss to help keep that embossing powder mostly to the stamped image. It's really hard sometimes on the white or on these dark papers like this to not get that scattering of um, embossing powder. So the powder tool just helps kind of hold the embossing powder exactly where it's supposed to be and won't let it stick anywhere else. What I did was stamp the front of all six tags. They are all different. You could definitely do them all the same. With a lot of the projects in my Handmade Holiday series, I'm trying to keep the projects to an hour or under. This is one of them that went a little bit over. Um, if you break it down into two kind of uh, sections, it probably would be about two hours total or an hour each. For the first was actually grabbing the images I wanted to use or the designs I wanted to use, the box, the bow, and the tags, sizing them in the Silhouette software, and die cutting them. That just does take a little bit of time, not a ton. Um, I would highly recommend that if it's something you think you would make more of or would do again like next year, once you have resized the images, save that file somewhere that you can remember and then you can die cut them again at any time without having to do a bunch of resizing. So a lot of times with tags and things um, I didn't used to do that I, um, and then I would find that I'd like to use this particular or these particular sizes over and over because they work well with Carrie's stamps so I started saving the file with the tags. So the front of the tags all feature images and phrases from the Twinkle stamp set. The back of the tags are going to feature an image from the tagged stamp set. And it's got a great to, from, cute little phrase, just a really great way to, um, or a great presentation for a gift. So that just completes the whole tag design. You're definitely going to want to use a marker that will work on dark cardstock, either a white marker or um, maybe in a metallic type of marker. But it really just adds a fun touch to the tags and gives them that complete look so that you have somewhere to write the recipient's name. So I stamped and embossed the front of the tags. Then I stamped and embossed the back of the tags. On these longer tag, rectangular kind of tags, 
there was a little piece for the whole reinforcement. I did die cut that from some white cardstock and then glued that in place over the front of the tag. I'm going to put something heavy on that while they dry and then I am going to start um, putting together the rest of the die cut elements. I'm going to start with the bows. While I was die cutting the boxes, I did die cut some of the bows from three of the papers, the green metallic, or green foil rather, and the two doodlebug glitter cardstock papers with the chevron design. And then I'm using glue dots to make these into a bow. So the one piece, fold, both back ends fold over and attach. Then you attach it to the flat piece with the bow ends and wrap the middle piece around to finish off the bow. I'm going to do that for the remaining two bows. Again, put a glue dot in the center, fold one side in, place another glue dot in the center, and fold the other side in. I apologize, this is out of the frame a little bit. I didn't realize that I had it, hadn't zoomed it out enough to show it very well. So here I'm picking up that other glue dot. I'll fold in the second ha half of the bow loop, place another glue dot on the back of that, Take the bow ends and attach that right there in the center. Grab another glue dot and I'm going to start wrapping around that little middle piece and that gives it that great finished look. You could have definitely done this out of um, lots of different papers. I didn't think the clear would probably be as showy. The uh, clear transparency boxes that I'm going to put together here in a little bit so I didn't die cut bows from those. And I didn't want to have bows like this on all of the packages. I wanted just a little variety. So on three of the packages, I will feature these bows and the other ones will use some twine or ribbon, a few additional elements. Not everything has to be die cut, I guess. So here's that white bow I'm gonna finish putting together. And there are my three bows. I think it just makes the most perfect bow. That's one of my favorite dies. And what is so great about digital die cuts is you can make that any size that you want to. As long as it fits on the cutting mat that goes through the silhouette, you can um, very easily make a bow in any size that you need. I'm gonna put together my clear box first. I think it's a little hard to tell with the transparency boxes. Um, this design does make little perforated lines, so I'm just folding those down. Surprisingly, the transparency is extremely easy to put together. They fold really nicely on those perforated lines. I was a little nervous when um, about how this might work because I haven't actually made a 3D box with uh, digital die cut transparencies and it went together really nicely. So while the transparency box is a little hard to see what I'm doing, I am gonna zoom out here in a little bit and as I put the boxes together for either the glitter or the foil box, you'll be able to see a lot easier exactly what I'm doing. All six boxes are exactly the same size and all six boxes go together exactly the same. With the transparency boxes, I think they would look awesome with really pretty either tissue paper inside or that kind of confetti type of stuff and then you can tuck your gift inside of that. Um, lots of different ways to add a fun touch inside. The great thing about the transparency boxes is that you they are see-through. So whatever you do use to kind of disguise the gift you place inside of these um, is going to be visible. So it gives you some options for, you know, putting a fun color of tissue paper in that really sets off the red stars or whatever, or the, the green or white confetti dots. Okay, here is how I'm putting the box together. You can see it so much easier with um, the glitter cardstock. I am simply folding all of those scored perforated edges, and then I'm going to fold the box together. I'm not even using any adhesive. You definitely could if you were worried about it staying together. I didn't, for one reason, the transparency box, I did not want adhesive showing, so I didn't use any adhesive there. They will stay together like they are here. Um, they may pop apart when the person opens the gift, but at that point you could always refold it and put it back together or not. Um, 
whatever you want to do. Now one side is deeper than the other. So the end or the side that isn't as deep is going to be your lid. And you just simply place that right over the other. And there is your cute little box. So here are the six boxes I created. And now comes the super fun part. And that is adding all of the embellishment and pretty ribbons and trims and tags to the gift boxes. Because I absolutely adore the Jingle Bells, um, I think they are just a great way to add a fun touch to a wrapped gift. I uh, use them a lot during this series. I just think they're so super fun. So anyway, I'm gonna just tie those to the tag here, glue, my handmade bow this is going to be kind of the monochromatic one where the white bow goes on the white glitter package and there's my stark black tag which i think looks awesome i did monochromatic a lot with these gifts um, i didn't intend to start out that way but it kind of just went that way this is some gold or not gold green silk ribbon wrapped around the box with a green bella boulevard feather one of the tags and then i'm just going to clip here with a green um doodle bug clothespin clip i'm going to clip that to the package i couldn't quite decide exactly how i wanted to do it so i'm trying some green sparkle twine as well to see if i like that and then i will clip that to the package and i think i ended up deciding i didn't like the sparkle twine for this one so i'm just going to clip the tag to the ribbon and leave it at that I am going to use some of the red sparkle twine from Lawn Fawn and wrap up my red glitter box. I'm going to tie that, wrap it into a little bow, and I want to make sure I get it so that it's nice and secure. So I'm going to go underneath there before I tie it in the bow. That looks much better. Again, kind of keeping with a the theme, I love these feathers from Bella Boulevard as a decorative tool as opposed to maybe a, a bow. Clip another tag to this one and that one's going to be finished as well. For the red star transparency box I'm going to use a little red sparkle twine with that tag and a red gemstone. Glue the paper bow in place. I'm going to take a little green sparkle twine for the green transparency box and thread through those jingle bells. Tie that into a nice bow. Again, secure those jingle bells to the tag first. And then I'm going to use glue dots to secure this bow to this package. And that's going to finish up all six of my packages. Um, just a great, easy way to quickly make six little gift boxes, perfect for all kinds of small gifts, um, maybe even small treats. And a really great way to uh, make your packaging super, super pretty for the holidays. Thanks for watching this video showcasing pretty packaging ideas featuring Carrie Bradford Studio stamps and die cuts. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.